Right, we're back in Austin, Texas for 6-5 on the road, which as I mentioned is kind of weird because 6-5 is based in Austin, but we're here at the Austin Convention that's that's Center at Zoholics Conference. Um, looking at this really, really interesting, really big, really important, really private software company, which is the right person. We have Mel Brew here, who is the Vice President and, and Principal Analyst at More Insights and Strategy. Mel, you've been, we're new to Zoho, Zoholics and Zoho, but you've been covering them for a while. Yes. I heard yesterday on the flight here, I was sitting next to an analyst who said, this is a very different conference. So she kind of set my expectations. And this morning in the media and analyst session, then in the keynote, I immediately heard and felt the difference with this organization, the philosophy, the conviction, the culture, You've been covering them for a long time. Walk us through some of the things that you've seen over the years as it's evolved. You know, it's funny that it has evolved. You can see it just from like a product standpoint, it's grown. And I think when I first saw the growth of Zoho, it concerned me a little bit. I was like, wow, they might be trying to do a little too much, you know? And I think from, what, from my perspective, it, it hasn't been too much and the customers continue to ask for more and they've been able to kind of spread that, like the, spread the goodness around and they've been able to really deliver on all of those promises. That's the one thing that's changed. The one thing that hasn't changed is that philosophy that like we, they are a small company that has gotten really big yeah. and they haven't changed. You know? That's an interesting way for you to look at it. I can see we we'll see it that way. You know, I walked into the, the morning session and you know, there were thousands of people here maybe? Yeah. I mean, it was a really there. big crowd yep. uh, that was impressive as you would expect from a really big, well-known software. Like we, right. we walked into an Oracle conference, I'd be like, oh yeah, sure. But yeah. this was Zoho, but it was this just giant crowd. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, they call it Zoholics and it is really, when you talk to their customers, you understand why. Yes. The customers are like, we need our Zoho. It's like they, and, and you know, I don't know if you saw in the keynote this morning, it's like, raise your hand if you use one Zoho product, yeah, yeah. and then 10, and then 20, and then 30. And it's like, people still have their hands up, you yeah. know? And I think they do such a good job of creating this environment where you use one, and then the next one is familiar. And then you're on a platform where everything sort of works together. Yeah. You can collaborate within the platform, but then also you can use, you, you know, they have a CRM, but if you're not on their CRM, you can integrate in there and you That's can, you, you're you not just, you know, have all this disparate data that you're just lost within it. It so. also seems like the, the low code customization mm -hmm. lets people really feel like connected with totally. their Zoho as your opponent. Like, yeah. like yes. that they're, they're in the same way um, one of their, the people can marry to a set of your own iPhone screen. But that kind of, yes. because you're the one that set it up that way, it's your personal personalization. Yes. And that's what makes a difference. Yeah. You know, I talked to two different customers today, one that sort of grew on Zoho and one that started on Zoho. And it was really an interesting conversation because one just knew that they didn't want to start on spreadsheets. And so they started with Zoho. And so my question to him- But this person couldn't use Excel? Well, they use Zoho. didn't want to, right? Like just said, I, I knew that that was not the way to go. And so they started with Zoho. And so my question to him was, were you smart or were you lucky? <laughs> it uh, was like maybe a little of both, yeah. right? Yeah. But then other customers who kind of grew with Zoho or migrated from another. And, you know, I'm not sure if you've heard the numbers, but I think a massive amount of their growth, maybe some 80% of their growth right now is migration from I saw from that. And I, I, that number was so big. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So people well, are using other time. CRM. No, what people people who are using or other something. other software are migrating to Zoho because their product. What What do you think? Who is losing business Zoho? I would say Microsoft is probably. I mean, I asked that question and in a, on a panel and yeah. I said, "Well, we don't want to really." No one wanted to say. I don't really want to give you like the the reasons why customers are telling us. You know, so I said, "What? Well, what are the reasons for the the big wins?" And they're like, "Well, we don't really want to give you that." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Could, be, could Salesforce be another one? I would guess. Yeah. I mean, we saw we've seen really dramatic slowdown in Salesforce core software sales, a slowdown in the growth rate. I should yeah. say it's a super impressive company. Mark, don't get mad at me. But <laughs> but the, we we've also seen lots of acquis right. bolt-on acquisitions right. have boosted the growth. That's Those have done point. quite well. These guys haven't done that. They did. They grow organically. I don't think I've ever seen that. Right. It is a lot of word of mouth. 
there's not, I mean, you don't see Zoho marketing, you don't see the whole, a lot of, a lot of advertising. And you know, they do some really interesting things that I think will keep customers happy and keep them around. I use a couple of Zoho products and there are some that like maybe have sat dormant for a little while. They will actually send me an email and say, hey, we see you haven't used this. You probably shouldn't be paying for it. They're proactive. Like that's not a typical software oh, maneuver, no, no, right? No. It's usually like, hey, use it. Did you know we have this feature? Do you know? Yeah. It's like, don't pay for something you're not using. Yeah. Yeah, that's not the emails yeah. I get from Adobe. Right? No. It's like, a different hey, approach. Well, use it. Right? It's like, like what Shredar was talking about. And I, I read, um, I think it was a tweet uh, from him or it was on his LinkedIn profile, one of the two, where he was talking about um, the growth of the organization, the, the organic growth, but also that they don't call themselves a software company. They call themselves specifically a technology company. My thought the other day, I'm like, I wonder what they discovered is the difference. And he showed a slide this morning. And I think the number was 32% of software that's sitting out there that's not used. So to your point, they're actually proactively going out to their customers saying either, hey, I'm bring new things here or let's cancel. Yeah. I mean, you just don't see that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't use it. Because Shelfware earns money for companies. Right. And I think they look really closely at how their customers are using products. You know, one of the questions that they, when I did a panel today, they said, ask what they don't like. They want to know that. They and, they're, and they're not afraid to talk about it in front of other customers. Yeah. You know, it's like that, that like. It's different. That really feedback. Different. Well, they did the Q&A this morning mm -hmm. in front of the entire audience. And normally that is a select few press and analysts that get invited to hear that. Yes. And it's under NDA. Yes. And well, not so, least of which they don't want to tank the stock price by saying something accidental. It's not an issue for a private company. No, it's not. Right. And that was something that I hadn't considered that. So it was, that was a kind of yeah. refreshing to me to see it. I don't yeah. want you to start thinking like me. It's not, it's not for you in here. It's not for you. Sure, it's not. Uh, uh, I don't want to get into the pricing details, but a number of the people who talked to customers talked to me were, talk, were sort of suggest they'd drop a line, oh yeah, and the pricing was good. It sounds like their software uh, is a lot less per seat than competitors. Yes, I think that that's true. I've also heard people say that they have, you know, depending on, it's, it's packaging, right? Like depending on what they have, I've heard some people say that like they, they wish they could have one thing, they only have one thing. So I think, you know, it's, it's packaging and I think, yes, price per seat, dependent on customers. Um, it would be great just to see that publicly, just to, you know, we, we're we're never going to see it. We'd love to we're see it. We're not going to see it. You said you no. were, and there goes the CEO right now. You said you were talking to customers today, or no, 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 in, I'm sorry, in the in the keynote, he asked people, raise your hand if you're using yes. 10, 20, 30. They've got 55, what, 55 plus yes. applications now. And are you seeing majority of customers that are using a pretty good amount of the suite? There were a lot of them today that had hands raised for 30 plus. Um, but you know, Zoho One is like just a comprehensive, and I think there's a lot of customers who are on Zoho One, and I've actually heard a lot of them say, "I want to be." <laughs> They're not, you know, FOMO. So yeah, FOMO is real. Mel, last thirty seconds. What? What would be a couple of words that you would use to describe Zoho and the trajectory that it's on from your analyst lens? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I would describe Zoho as really customer centric. Um, I think building a future for um, innovation, but not for innovation's sake. Yeah. I think for, you know, really customer in mind, um, collaboration in mind, interoperability in mind, and just solving, solving problems and not really caring about like what the rest of the world is doing yeah. and, and shareholders. It's yeah. just actually just getting out and executing and not being afraid to make a mistake and, and pivoting. Exactly. Awesome, Mel. Thank you so much for sharing your insights about what you've seen the last couple of days. We appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. All right, coming up next, one last look at Zoho with some of our other analysts. Uh, we've got an interesting take on what this company is up to here at Zoholics Austin with Six Five on the road.